Hey everyone! In this video, I'll show you how to integrate a 2NIP intercom with your Crestron home system using a driver that supports SIP calls, switch control, and advanced event triggers like motion, noise, and user authentication. We'll go step by step through installation, configuration, licensing, and I'll show you the driver in action within the Crestron home interface. The driver comes in two versions. The basic version includes SIP calling and control of up to four switch outputs. The advanced version adds event triggers, including motion and noise detection, input, state changes, and user authentication events. All communication is secured using digest authentication. Let's dive in. Once you've logged into your 2N device through the web interface, the first step is to configure a user profile. Go to the directory section and open users. If you haven't already created one, click add user. In the phone number field, enter the value Rava Crestron. This allows the 2N intercom to make Rava calls to all Crestron panels in the Crestron group. Of course, you can also use a different group or extension name if needed. In this same section, you can also define a numeric code to trigger switch actions. For example, if we set the code to 2345, that will trigger a switch. But if the entered code is one number higher, in this case 2346, it will also activate the silent alarm. We'll show how to link this event to an action later in the video. To enable the silent alarm feature, go to Services, then Exit Rules, and make sure Silent Alarm Enabled is checked. If you plan to use SIP functionality, head over to Calling, then SIP, and configure your local SIP extension and SIP server settings. This isn't directly related to the Crestron home driver, but it's important if you want to use custom SIP destinations from the driver. While you're in the Calling section, we also recommend enabling Crestron network discovery under the Crestron tab and optionally setting a recognizable device name. To allow the Crestron driver to communicate with your 2N device, go to Services, then HTTP API, and enable the services you plan to use, such as system, switches, or calls. Make sure to set the connection type to secure TLS and authentication to digest. Then, under Account 1, enter a valid username and password. These credentials will be used later in the Crestron home setup, so take note of them. Also, be sure to check the required user privileges. At minimum, you'll need system, phone calls, and switches. If you want to use switch outputs, go to Hardware, then Switches, enable the switches, and configure their behavior according to your needs. For noise detection, open audio, and enable the detection feature. To enable motion detection, go to camera, then internal camera, and activate the motion detection profile. Finally, note that this driver was developed and tested with the firmware version shown on the screen. We highly recommend keeping your 2N device up to date. Also, keep in mind that some features like motion detection may require additional 2N licenses to be activated on the device and have nothing to do with the Crestron home driver. To add the 2N Crestron home driver, open the Crestron home setup app and start by selecting a room. Then navigate to drivers, choose platform, select the 2N brand, and finally click on IP Verso. Although the driver is named after IP Verso, it actually supports all 2N intercom models that use the 2N HTTP API. This includes models like IP Base, IP Force, IP Style, and others. When you click the plus button, you'll be asked to give your device a name. After that, you'll reach a screen where you need to enter the IP address of your 2N device and the license key. 
At this point, it's important to explain how licensing works. The driver supports three types of licenses. First, there is a trial license, which is now used and gives you access to all features for 60 minutes. Then there's the basic license, which enables SIP calling and control of up to four switch outputs. And finally, the advanced license unlocks full functionality, including all the event triggers like motion detection, noise detection, input changes, and user authentication. You can purchase a license on our official online store. If you're not sure how the process works, we've linked a video in the top right corner that explains it step by step. It's also very important to note that the license is tied to the serial number of your 2N intercom, not to the Crestron processor. Once you've entered the IP address and license key, click Next, and you'll be prompted to enter the username and password. These must match the credentials you previously set up in the 2N web interface under the HTTP API account. If everything is set up correctly, you'll now see that the driver is connected and the platform status is marked as online. To add a SIP extension, navigate to Manage Platforms and select the 2N platform you previously added. Here, you'll see that there are 10 available SIP extensions you can use for calling via either SIP or RAVA protocols. Once you press the plus button to add a new extension, a configuration window will appear. In this window, you can choose whether you want the extension to be visible on the home screen or inside a room page. In some cases, you might not want the extension to appear in the user interface, especially if you're planning to use it only for automated actions or events. For example, you might use it in a scene that ends the call once a door is unlocked or starts a call automatically when someone approaches the intercom. In our case, we've entered a Rava address in the SIP address field since we previously configured the 2N device to call the Rava Crestron group, allowing us to call all Crestron panels in the Crestron group at once. After adding the extension, we can preview how it appears in the Crestron Home app. The interface is simple and intuitive with two buttons, call panels, and end call. As the name suggests, one initiates the call and the other ends it. To add a switch, go to Manage Platforms and select one of the four available switches. In this example, I'll choose switch number one and give it a descriptive name. After that, we're presented with the usual installation window where we can decide whether this tile should appear on the home screen or in the room page. Just like with the SIP extension, it's entirely up to you whether you want the switch to be visible to the user. If you plan to use the built-in tile with switch on and switch off buttons, then set visibility to one. But if you're using it purely for actions and events behind the scenes, you can set it to zero and later create a custom tile that triggers those actions. In the Crestron app, the default switch tile includes two buttons, switch on and switch off, which perform exactly as expected. Now let's take a look at how we can use the switch on action when we receive a SIP call on a Crestron touch panel. First, we go into the room where we want to add the quick action button. Then under quick actions, we press the plus button, give the action a name, and set the mode to sequence. From the action list, we find our switch action, in this case, switch on from the front gate and add it to the sequence. To make this action available during a SIP call, we go to settings and enable the call screen visible option. Once that's done, the action will appear on the call screen while a SIP call is active. During a SIP call, you'll notice an Actions button. Tapping it will reveal our custom action called Open Door, which we created earlier. This is perfect for real-world scenarios like unlocking a gate directly from the intercom call screen.
To unlock the full potential of the 2 Encrestron home driver, we can use the Events extension, which allows us to subscribe to specific triggers coming from the 2 N device. Once these events are detected, they can initiate actions within the Crestron home ecosystem, giving us powerful automation capabilities. Just like in previous chapters, we go to Managed Platforms and locate the Events extension. By pressing the plus button, we add it to our project and give it a descriptive name. Keep in mind, the Events extension doesn't have any UI tile visible in the app, since it's not used for direct interaction, it simply listens for events in the background. To make use of these events, we go to the Actions and Events section. There we'll find a folder labeled Events, which includes all available 2 end triggers. Each one is clearly named to reflect its purpose, and we can connect them to specific actions. Let's look at a few examples. First, we'll connect the motion detection event to a SIP call. So when someone approaches the intercom, the call is automatically triggered to all panels. Next, we'll link the noise detection event to a third-party relay device on the same network, which could activate something like an exterior light or security siren. And for the final example, we'll take the user authenticated event, which signals that a valid user has entered their code and the door has been opened, and we'll connect it to a cloud-based push notification driver. This way, whenever the event is triggered, you receive a notification directly on your phone. There are countless ways to use these events, from smart home automation to security alerts, and it's entirely up to you to decide what suits your project best. And if you have ideas for more events or use cases, feel free to reach out to us. We're always listening to customer feedback and regularly implement new features based on your input. And that's it. See you in the next video.